Hey everybody, it's Derek Comartin from CodeOpinion.com, and this is actually the third roundup I've done on my blog, CodeOpinion.com, but it's the first I'm actually doing in video format, which I'm going to do to just accompany the, the blog itself, and the idea here is through my week, I generally either read different blog posts or see different videos that I find interesting that are either helpful to my day-to-day -day in .NET or related tech. So I just thought it'd be useful to kind of throw in my commentary, provide some other links uh, that I find useful that maybe you'll find useful too. So again, this is on CodeOpinion.com as well as on my YouTube channel here that you're watching this now. So this is the third roundup. The other two I'll post in the description. Um, but this was last week, uh, the, I guess Monday was the 7th, so I'm doing this on the 14th. But this was last week, I'm generally posting these at the end of the week, but I'm doing this uh, video a little bit late. So the first one was, most of all the links are related to Build 2018 that happened last week, and the announcements that came from there. Uh, and the first is Video uh, Studio Live Share, that was announced quite a while ago, I think at the end, uh, kind of in the fall of 2017, with some previews, but now it's generally available. So you can get the extension for Visual Studio and Visual Studio Code. And if you don't know what this is, it's just the ability to live share and debug, um, regardless of if you're in VS, full-blown VS or VS Code, um, with two users and debug, uh, run the app. You should watch watch the video, the sample video. It's the it's it looks incredible. I have yet to use it um, yet. So once I do, I'll probably throw out a uh, like a tutorial or just a review itself. But the responses and the reviews that I've heard so far are pretty unbelievable. So definitely check uh, VS Live Share if you are either remote, working remote as I am, or just do a lot of screen sharing. You know some of the solutions out there are pretty terrible, so this is pretty exciting. This one I found really interesting that came out of uh, Build was that .NET Core 3, which they said would preview later this year and ultimately get released next year, will support Windows desktop apps. So that being Windows, uh, Windows Forms, WPF, and UWP. I just find this really interesting that they're going down this road. Obviously, this would only be supported on Windows itself, even though .NET Core is cross-plat. You're not going to be able to run these apps on Linux or Mac um, if you're targeting uh, WinForms, WPF, and UWP, but it just allows you to use the runtime itself for these apps. There was a demo showed um, at Build on this working, running .NET Core. I think the benefits which the illustrated there are the performance improvements of the runtime versus full framework. And I think the biggest one for most would be the ability to define the runtime that you're using as you deploy your, your Windows app because you can do side-by-side -side deployments and you can include the runtime with your deploy. Um, to me, that's the biggest thing if you're kind of living in the desktop world that you'd see out of this is the perf and then the side-by-side -side and like defining your runtime. So I thought that was really interesting I may post another video on this about some more commentary around here because I think this is pretty telling about where they want .NET Core to go and getting people off full framework. There was also ML.NET was announced. Um, and this line I thought here was pretty interesting that this was developed by Microsoft Research and has been used quite a bit over the last decade um, in things like uh, Windows, Bing, Azure, and more. And they're releasing this now. To what subset, I'm not exactly sure from what they actually use, but I think the idea is really interesting that they decided, hey, let's take some of the secret sauce, if you will, behind some of their products in ML, and let's make it a framework and make it available. So I'm definitely going to be checking uh, this out a little bit more. This goes hand in hand, I think, uh, to the WinForm support on .NET Core. And, and kind of some of my theories about moving people and getting roadblocks out of people's way is that EF 6.3, which currently runs only on full framework, will target 
uh, .NET Core 3 as well as full framework, I assume. But the fact that it's going to be supported on, in .NET Core 3, I think this is, again, pretty telling that if you, if you have a larger application and you're using Entity Framework and moving to EF Core is going to be either very laborious, et cetera, and just the constraints and costs associated with migrating is uh, too much, that this will work on EF Core is, is pretty telling. I think just Microsoft is saying, hey, let's get some of the roadblocks out of the way. So I never caught this at all at Build um, or following my Twitter feed. I'd never seen anybody actually mention this. It was, I just happened to notice when I was watching the replay of the EF 2.1 roadmap. And like I said, 33, almost 34 minutes in here is when they kind of announced this. So if you want to watch this video, click the link. Um, I'll have it in the description. And yeah, just jump over to like the 34 minute mark and you'll, you'll see their discussion about this and some of the limitations. Lastly, there is now a Hyper-V Android emulator that's now supported. So this is in the Windows 10 April 2018 update. And um, just the idea here being is if you have a Hyper-V, which you probably already do, and you probably have it already enabled, um, when you're installing the actual Visual Studio tools for Xamarin, you can now, um, when you like get mobile development, showing here, you can actually add the Android emulator now. So this is pretty cool. Um, I think a lot of people have been wanting this since the other ones I find a little bit slow. I don't do a ton of uh, Xamarin development, but when I do, this will be um, a, a nice way to use it, to, to use the, uh, the new emulator in Hyper-V. So if you're into Xamarin, check that out as well. So that's my roundup. This is week three. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and please subscribe because like I said, I'll be putting these out likely every week. As long, uh, along with my other videos related based on more on tutorials and how to's, I'm going to keep these consistent of doing these each week about just different things that I find out. So give it a thumbs up and please subscribe. Thanks.